Hello everybody, welcome back to today's video. Today we are going to be taking a look at the first version of our Bung our um, IntelliJ um, coding tutorial. I'm actually going to stick with this series for a while, so you may be seeing more videos of coding tutorials for Spigot and everything on this channel. To start off, we're going to just explain how to create a project, how to export it, and how to get everything normally set up for IntelliJ. Um, the first thing you're going to need is IntelliJ. There's a community edition and there is a paid version. I'm currently using the paid version, but the community version kind of does the exact same thing, just doesn't have all the features. If you have the money and are willing to spend it, I recommend the paid version just because of the extra features, but it's not required at all. You're free to welcome to get the community version of it. Eclipse is another option. It just has half the things that this has, and I really prefer coding in this compared to Eclipse because of it's simple. It's very more simple. There's a few things you're going to need when setting this up. First, you're going to need IntelliJ, and second, I use a plugin called the Minecraft Development Plugin. This plugin allows me to create plugins very easily through Maven and Maven and all of that. So here's how you do it. You're going to press Create New Project when you're on the home screen. You're going to go down to where it says Minecraft, and you're going to click what you want. Today, we will be working on a Spigot plugin, so you're going to click Spigot and press Nest. This is going to be your Java version. You're going to need a Java development kit from Oracle. Uh, these are available online. It also prompts you to install one when installing IntelliJ. You pr if you are new to coding, you may not have this, but if you install Eclipse or one of those before, it would in have you install it anyway. So you may already have this. If not, no. The minimum version you can use is 1.8 for Java. The reason for this is because this allows for you to create Spigot plugins off the one the Java 8 um, version, when normally it would be off of a different version. Today we're going to be using the Spigot plugin for Java version 8 because that's what I have installed. When you press next, you're going to get your group ID. This is going to be your class name. So I'm going to type net noodles.tutorial1. Your artifact ID is going to be like what's your main class. So I'm just going to call it main. And for version, I'm just going to keep it 0 0.1. And you want you can either use Grand L or Maven. I use Maven. It's way easier. I'm going to go ahead and press next. Then you're going to get your plugin name. I'm going to name it tutorial one plugin version main class then you can select your minecraft version right here has 1.12.1 through 1.13.2 i will um show you how you'll set this to 1.8 because that's what we're going to be mainly working in right now i'm going to keep it default here's where you can set your optional settings i normally do this i'm going to set the description as plugin tutorial one the author will be mean noodles our website is bghd development this is all going to go into your plugin.yml file it's going to load post world. The, there's no depends. There's no lo load before, and you can even set a prefix. But we're going to do that ourselves. Now this is where you're going to set your uh, location. So I'm going to do this really quickly. It's not going to be in Mintar. It's going to be in um, slash plugin make. I'm going to do this real quick. I'll be right back. So in order to specify a path, you just click the three button thing and enter your project name. Here I I created it in my plugin makers folder in new tutorial one. The reason why I paused before doing this is because I have a lot of files on my computer. Some of them are for school and I can't have you guys seeing that sad, sadly. Then you just go ahead and press finish and it's going to start this up right here. You're going to load into this page. Everything's going to lo load in. You're going to have the side button open. You want I normally open this up all the way so you can see everything right here. So you can see here this is where we set our net.noodles.tutorial1.main and here is our main class right here. I always enable auto import down here. It's so much easier. This is where we're going to change our spigot version. So you're going to scroll down in your uh, palm.xml file to where you see the org.spigot spigot API. You're going to delete where it says 1.13.2 and I'm going to type 1.8.8 snapshot. And that's going to go ahead and load. It's going to say downloading it and then there we go. We have it set up just like that. Perfectly fine. Now. In order to start setting this up, we're going to want, we automatically have the plugin void on enable and the plugin void on disable. So pretty much we have a working plugin already. The reason why it sets this up automatically for us is because it's pretty smart. So it automatically creates it for us um, by doing that. So what we're going to work on for this first tutorial is creating a very easy command. Now the reason why we're going to do this is because it's really easy to do. You're going to go over to your main class over here. You're going to click new and click uh, Java class. I'm going to name it command for this tutorial. You can name it anything you want, but I'm going to name it to be simple. And then I'm going to do implements command executor. This is going to allow the plugin to execute a command through uh, Spigot. 
In order to uh, fix this, you can hover over it and click this, and you can do implement methods. You can click this and click OK. This is going to put in everything you need to automatically create a command. This is really a unique feature to IntelliJ, which I very much enjoy, um, because it allows you to easily um, drag all this in, which makes it very easy. So that's very useful. So what we're going to do for this command is we're going to go ahead down here. We're going to go ahead and just remove this for a moment. It's going to cause an error, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Right now, we're going to only want this command to run as the com console. So we're going to do if sender instance of player. Now, you may be wondering what I'm doing. I'm pressing tab when I uh, need to import something. So you see here, it's going to give me an error, right? It's going to give me an error here. If you have this error, you're going to press enter. You're going to press alt and enter and click the one you want. For this, we needed to say this is a player from bucket. So this is where we're going to be um, doing something. Do something. I always recommend making notes like this. So then down here, if we use it incorrectly, do something here, and we will return the command as true, which would reset it back to the beginning and won't run anything. So we'll start with this. So why don't we start doing something fairly easy? Why don't we send a message and give the player an item? That may be useful. So we can get rid of this do something because we know what we're going to do now. So why don't we start with setting up, uh, creating and giving them a diamond and some bricks. Um, so we're going to do item stack. And then it's going to be diamond. This will be the name of your item stack. It's going to equal new item stack material dot bucket dot diamond. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put a little end there. There we go. That's all you got to do right now. Then I'm going to create some bricks. So I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did, but name it bricks. It's going to equal a new item stack material dot brick. Now you may be wondering, I want to give the player more than one piece of brick and more than one diamond. Well, we can do that. We can do bricks dot set amount. And in this case, I'm doing 25. Then you're like, how do we give it to them? Well, let's do this. We're going to do player, which we specified up here who the player it is. It's a sender of the command. We're going to get their inventory. And in order to, you can hotkey this. So you can just type a few things and press tab on what you want, which makes it very easy. We're going to do add item. And inside the things, we're going to do bricks diamond. Just like we did before. Exactly. So now you see these are no longer grayed underlined. That means they're being used, which is another cool feature of in, uh, Intel IJ or Intel IJ, whatever you call this program. Um, I constantly mispronounce it, which is weird. But so there we go. We got that set up right there. Anytime the commands run, it's going to do that. What we're going to do is we're also going to want to send them a message. We're going to do player dot send message. We're going to do chat color dot red. Or we'll do green to specify good. Then put a plus sign, parentheses. Inside the parentheses is what's going to be shown. So I'm going to say, send the message, you got free stuff, exclamation point. That's all you got to do. This will kind of work. We have to enable it, but it will work. So you use incorrectly, do something. So here's what we're going to do about this. We are going to say, just keep it very simple. We're going to do player dot send message. Oh, here is something that you don't, you're going to have to learn about. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this um, a different way. We're going to add another thing to here, which is going to allow us to specify the command that we want to run. So in order to do this, we're going to need, sorry, everybody, I had someone walk in my room. So. I'm glad I could edit, you know that. <laughs> um, so in order to do this a little differently, we're going to keep the return true to there so we don't get an error. Right below here, 
we're going to go ahead and do, well, we'll do this before we say it's a player. It's not required. You can put it after, but I like putting it before to make it a little neat. We're going to do if command, which we specified at the beginning, um, dot get name dot equals or equals ignore case. And we're going to do parentheses. And for this, we're going to do tutorial. What this is specifying is this is specifying, oh, we have a command here which is going to be if they run the the um, heh, if they run the command tutorial it will give them to a diamond and some brick we can also specify this in the main class and i'll show you how to do that in a moment so in order to set up permissions and stuff you would do we will just give an example here for permissions if Oh, we want to put this below here, right here. So if sender dot has, hold on. If sender dot has permission, do the exact same thing we just did. Parentheses, oh. and then that means it's gonna run this, just right back. And then you want to, because this is inside the brackets, we're gonna put it there. I'll I'll just fix that in a moment, but I'll show you what to do. So you're gonna do this, and then that means if it has permission tutorial one it's gonna run this command now here's what we're gonna do next we are going to get rid of this return to real quick add that now you're gonna see it's gonna error because it's missing a return to so we're gonna put the return to here now here's what we're gonna do with this if we're gonna do this again and put down here ah this is an easier way of doing it you can do this else just like this so if they don't have the permission tutorial one if it's something else and they don't have that permission we're going to send them a message which is going to be chat color dot red plus i should put it all caps there we go and it's going to say you do not have permission to run this command just like that pretty simple pretty easy now we're gonna I'm gonna show you how you uh, set this up in your main class to keep things organized I like to create a public void over here and I normally call it register commands just like this now what you're gonna put in this is get command and we're gonna put the name here so I'm gonna put what I put tutorial then you're gonna do dot set executor, then the class name, and you're gonna put new. For my case, it's command. Just like that, then that's set up. To register this command, though, it says register commands. In your on enable, you're gonna put register commands. That will register that command that you set up there. That means we are almost ready for this. Next, we gotta go in our plugin to plugin.yml file and add commands. Just like this. Then we're going to enter our command. For ours, it's tutorial. Just like that. All you got to do to set it up. We have a working basic plugin. Let me show you how to export it. We're going to go to file. We're going to go to project structure. You're going to go to artifacts. You're going to go to this little plus button. Click the jar. And from module with dependency, press OK. You don't have to do anything else. This is where we're going to name it. For me, I'm going to name it tutorial1. And this is where you're going to specify where you're going to exit it out. For my example so for my example I'm exporting it to C users user desktop development IT tutorials you can change the name of your jar by right-clicking and click rename here you can see there's no more available elements there's gonna be more available elements if you use like a MongoDB database MySQL or something right now we only have our basic plugin you want to export it to the jar of course and name it tutorial one you can press apply and okay exit out to build the plugin and actually create it you're gonna click build build artifacts and build the first time it's going to do, it's going to check for errors in the plugin. If there's any errors or anything, it will pop up down here saying, error, something's wrong. This gives you a little warning that something went wrong when compiling and you should probably fix it. Or if there's an error in your chat, it will also give you that there's an error going on. Maybe you should fix it before compiling. Let me start the server and I can show you exactly what we did. So here we go. We're starting it up. It's loading up. In order to see if it would load correctly, we're going to look right here. It says tutorial one enabling tutorial one. That means it's loaded correctly. You can also see that we don't have a configure file called tutorial one. The reason for this is we have nothing to configure right now. And in one of the next tutorials, I'm going to explain how 
you can set it up so you have a configure file where you can configure the messages that you have. What you want to do is once you have this loaded up, you're going to wait for your Minecraft to start and you're going to join your local host server. Now, this is the time where bug fixing comes in the most. If there's something wrong with your code, this is when you're going to notice it. Normally, if there's something wrong with your code, you're going to get a message in your console that will tell you what's wrong and where to look at the error. Let's hope we don't have any of those issues when looking today, but we're going to take a quick look. So, if we do slack PL, we can see tutorial 1 is activated. We can do about tutorial 1, and it's going to tell us it's made by us, our website, the version, and, um, yes, the description that we set. Now, in order to actually run our command, it's slack tutorial. And you got free stuff. There's the message we set. You got one diamond, 25 bricks, exactly what we specified here in our main command class, right here exactly 25 bricks you get a diamond as well if you have the permission tutorial and your command is tutorial there i don't have the permissions plugin installed so we can't test if we don't get them if we don't type it but if you are up and you do have the permission it will work i'm up on the server so i'm able to have all permissions it's that simple it's pretty much that simple for every single thing you do it gets complicated every like the more you do the more complicated it gets we're going to get into some of those high level hard stuff in the future now, what I recommend doing for every single plugin you make is saving it to GitHub. If you have the paid version of, of uh, IntelliJ or IntelliJ or whatever, um, you have this built in. You can go to VCH, go to Import into Version Control Share Project on GitHub. It will, uh, it will ask you to log in. You can create a um, to private tutorial. You can create a private database if you have the paid version of GitHub or a developer account. You can set the remote name and the description of it. So this description for this is tutorial one for the BGH BGH development YouTube channel tutorial. Just put YouTube channel. And if I press share, it's going to share this on GitHub. You're going to add everything you have in the plugin here. It's going to push to the master just like that and it's successfully shared on github here you go so you got this successfully shared your code is safe on github exactly where you want it so you never if you lose your computer you never have an issue with it at all that is it for the episode one of tutorial of uh Int intel ij or intel j whatever you call it tutorial i'm gonna keep messing that up every single time Next time, we're going to take a look at configure files and events and see what we can do with those. Maybe make a block breaking event or something like that. Um, if you want to follow along on the original way I did the commands and stuff, they're all available on Spigot's wiki page. I was trying to follow that as much as I could, but I also wanted to put in this uh, message, so I kind of switched it up a little bit and did it a different way. But um, it's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. It's... Um, all available to learn you can go online to learn it you can do classes you can read books or you can just watch youtube videos which you're probably doing right now watching this tutorial so it's pretty simple um to set up and everything and hopefully you did learn a little bit about coding and you're able to do a little bit more like you could today um if you have any questions please leave them down in the comments or join our discord server we'd be happy to help you out we even have a channel for that so just leave all your questions in there we'll be happy to tell you everything the next coding tutorial I'm hoping to come out in a few days, um, most likely some point in the next week, and if not, it's going to be a little longer just due to school, but I'm going to try to get everything out in the next week or so to get episode 2 going and ready. Um, this is for, if you want an Eclipse tutorial as well, let me know. I'm happy to make a Eclipse version of this. There is episode 1 and 2 of Eclipse already on the channel from a very long time ago. You can go look those up if you want. They're in a playlist called pl uh, Coding Tutorials, so go check that out if you wish. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Noodles, and I will see you in the next plugin tutorial and um, the next coding tutorial on the channel. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.